Good morning. Is it still morning? It is. Good morning, Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. Oops, sorry for my phone. It's like I'm, I'm, I shut everything off above that. Today, I want to show you this quick, hopefully quick tutorial where I'm going to use this new, it's a mesh stencil, which I have never used before. Um, so this is going to be totally new to me. I just took it out of the package and you pull it away and it's almost, it's like a silk screen stencil. It's literally this very, very fine mesh, if you could see that. So um, I'm going to be using it on this piece of heavy, heavy maple that I'm going to paint white use the stencil and it is not it's slightly different the way we're going to be painting this than a traditional stencil and it's by it's amy howard and it's a maker studio so it's kind of a, a one of her brands and it's called an adhesive mesh stencil so i'm excited to show that to you guys and um first thing i have to do get my white paint People have asked me, and I'm going to show you again, how I store my paint. I spoke to a wonderful uh, customer this morning, and she has paint in her basement that's been there a couple of years. If you guys use these FIFO bottles and keep your paint there, you won't have to worry about the rust. That's the big thing that happens to most of those cans. All right. Grab my little Pyrex. I collect these this is what I use and look at that how easy is that you just squeeze it out and it stays super clean I just love it and the color I'm gonna use for the stencil is this beautiful teal so that's what we're gonna use we'll see how it goes as you guys know I'm using a, a little one inch brush but I always wet it, and you see me do that. I always wet my brush before I start painting. Give it a good blot with these old kitchen towels, and that prevents the paint from moving up into the ferrule, and you'll, your brushes will last a lot longer. Now this is raw wood, so you know it's just gonna absorb. I already got paint on it of the teal is just going to absorb this white paint and I'm thinking that I will use this as a coat rack depending on how this stencil comes out and you know what I always say if it doesn't come out if it doesn't work right and if it doesn't, it's, it's user error because it's the first time. I can just paint right over this and try again, as my grandson says. So when you're painting on raw wood like this, it is going to take more paint for sure. down here and the first coat and those of you who've been following me have heard me say this a lot of times is not gonna look like the best coat and it shouldn't especially when you're working with milk paint because that means you're applying just too much paint and it could sag it can crack unless it's for a technique that you're using where you want that you really just want to apply nice even thin coats so we'll get some on the bottom this is one of my favorite projects and I do have these around little hanging racks for um, different things in my sewing room it's just a nice little project to test out some ideas all right, got that to the side, and then I've got my trusty blow dryer to 
to dry this really quickly. And I'm gonna put my brush back into water. Hope I don't have anything that's gonna blow around. Now when you guys are working on a piece of raw wood, what you're gonna notice, and this is why I tell people if you can hang on to the original finish on a piece of furniture, um, do that. Because when you take off like a shellac or a varnish, it opens up the grain and you're gonna see it rise. So if this were a piece of furniture that I was working on, what I would do is let this dry completely. I would give it a light sand to knock back um, all those little pieces of the grain that are popping up. And this is a, a really important lesson if you want that smooth finish. But you could see them right here popping up and I can feel it. Because of the project that I'm doing, I'm not super worried about that. But when you're working on a piece of furniture, that's very important. Okay, I'm going to hit this one more time. Now we're going to apply a quick second coat, squeeze out just a little bit of this white paint, blot my brush, so are you guys working on any projects yet? It's almost the end of summer and people, I think, I know I am, looking around because we're all going to be back in our houses getting ready for the holidays. Yes, they are around the corner. But this is a great time to start and finish some of those projects that you want to get done. All right. And with the second coat, if you find it gets a little draggy, mine is fine. You can always add a little water to your paint. Okay, one more little spot. Hit it with the blow dryer, and next is the stencil. I do use a blow dryer, by the way, 
when I'm working on furniture paint painting projects, the only thing you have to be really careful about is if you apply the paint um, like a thick coat, when you hit it with that blow dryer, you could make it crackle. So that's why I, I advise just using thin, even coats. And with white, if you're going over a dark surface, you're probably gonna have to do three coats. And for those of you that wanna create like a lot of texture, get the blow dryer, put that paint on a nice thick coat, hit it with a blow dryer so it gets really hot and you'll get some really cool crackling. All right, now, let me get this out of the way. Here is the stencil. Oh my God, I've got paint on everything. I'm making a mess. I don't know where that came from. Oh well, take that off. I'm gonna pull it away from the backing. Now the only thing I'm thinking about, and I'm, I'm not gonna do it to see how this comes out, is sometimes you'll see people with these adhesive stencils. You know, I watch YouTube and they'll put it on a cloth to put a little lint on it so it's not as sticky. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna try it like this and see what happens after I get out all my wet paint. Okay, and I think I want, look at that crown. How cool is that? And you can cut these stencils too. I'm going to put the crown in the middle. Actually, I'm gonna drop it. And it is pretty easy to move. I want the top of that. Okay, so I'm gonna get this, get everything out of the way. and press this down. And like I said, I've, ne I've never done this. I've never silk screened or anything. I have some credit cards and the Ikea card to push the paint down into the mesh. And I don't wanna do that. And I think I'm gonna try to move it over to fill this spot over here when I'm done. All right. And I'm not gonna wet my brush. I'm using this cute little um, pointed brush, a sash brush, and I'm not gonna wet it because I don't want my paint to be really thin. Um, we'll see. I'm gonna press this down. Hopefully it won't pull up the white paint. All right, here we go. And you can I you can wash these. Thank God, they're reusable. And you wash them um, just with regular soap and water. I'll probably use my scrubby soap, which I love, love, love. And the key is I can't let the paint start to dry because when you pull up the stencil, the mesh needs to pull through the wet paint. That's why I'm doing this really fast. Okay, if there's any, uh, of you creatives out there that have used the stencil. I would love, I'd love to know what you're thinking. You're probably screaming. All right, I'm just gonna pull this over it, grab my rag, oh, I would love to use this stencil on a t-shirt. And I'm doing this really fast, because again, I don't want it to dry and I'm just wiping it off with each pass. All right, I think that's it. Let's see. 
think this can get really messy. Oh, cool. There it is. How cool is that? Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Wow. There it is. That looks beautiful. Now, and because this is all different directions, the, the design, I'm gonna put a piece that I didn't use right over here. Let's see how that goes. Kind of to blend over like that. And I really want to make sure this is well stuck down. Okay. Grab my paint. Now I've seen people use um, products that are like a paste and I can see why because you want something really thick but this seems to be working well do this again I don't want to mess up that edge all right let's see Wow, that is the coolest. I must say, that is really, really cool. So let me show you a close-up of what this looks like. Isn't that beautiful? So where it did, I see one spot right down here, and it's actually where the wood was a little bit rough, but you could see right there where it kind of bled a little bit and right here. But wow, that is gorgeous. This can be used, these stencils, on um, stationary paper. Imagine doing this on a wall. I'm thinking about, I have a little powder room, and to do this just on one of the walls um, maybe with a dark, darker color and a metallic would be absolutely gorgeous. So how easy is that? These, I just got these in. They're up on the Chalk Mercantile website and it's under Amy Howard at home. And I think I just put it right under stencils, but it's absolutely beautiful. I might, um, in fact, I know I'm going to use this on a bigger project to show you guys. So there you go, how easy was that? I'm gonna put some hooks on this and use it as a little coat rack in um, one of the rooms, one of the bedrooms or maybe a bathroom in, in our house. Um, oh, I'm, I'm super excited. I love when I use a new product and it's like so cool like this. Let me know what you guys Think. Let me know if you've tried anything, if you have any hints or tips. And you guys, the Surface Anthology membership is opening soon, so get ready. And in that membership, we take um, these paint finishes and go way, way deeper into them and how to use them on furniture and different um, uh, surfaces, hence the name Surface Anthology. So if you're interested in getting on the wait list, because it's going to be opening very, very soon, you can go to chalkmercantile.com or surfaceanthology.com, and there's just a little pop-up form, and just put your name on the wait list, and you'll be the first to know when those doors open. All right, you guys, happy Thursday, happy creating, and happy painting. See you soon.